What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestler character changes that made no hella sense, man. It's an interesting thing when all of a sudden uh, a wrestler that's been acting one way for so long all of a sudden makes a, a dramatic shift in their character. And you're just wondering what the hell's going on. Why did they change their their whole persona all of a sudden you know it wasn't even a gradual build sometimes that happens it's it's the interesting world of uh uh booking of wrestling characters so we're gonna check out some of these uh character changes that didn't make sense once again this video is brought to you by the undisputed youtube wrestling champion of the world your boy ross all right let's get right into this one appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on channel Road to 150k, let's do the damn thing. Character changes in the WWE are a key ingredient for keeping characters fresh and current. Character changes could bring a new lease of life to a beloved character and offer fans something new and exciting. For sure. Whilst the character change should be unique, it should be grounded in kayfabe reality and should have some sense of logic and reasoning and always align with the established continuity of that specific character. Unfortunately, over the years, WWE have been prone to delivering a character change which simply makes no sense whatsoever. Facts. This character change does more damage than good and ultimately makes fans question what on earth WWE were thinking. Join us Big now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE character changes that made zero sense. Big Be facts, sure to subscribe man. and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. No, also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and an on wrestling channel. Incredible. Number 10, Big Time Bex. Becky Lynch made her grand return to WWE at the SummerSlam pay-per-view in 2021. Lynch would return following her 15-month hiatus and would squash ultra-popular babyface yeah, Bianca Belair to no win the sense. Raw Women's title. Out. What followed was a misplaced and misguided heel I think turn he meant to of say, one of WWE's uh, SmackDown's women's title. <laughs> most popular stars. Lynch would turn heel immediately after a SummerSlam return and begin to berate the fans. This personality change made no sense though, as before Lynch departed WWE the year prior, she had a genuine connection with the fans, and there wasn't a logical reason why Lynch suddenly hated the audience. The character change risk. I'm, I'm one of those people she shouldn't have went heel. It didn't make sense. Her heel turn wasn't really that good. It didn't make sense. You come back, of course you're going to be a face. Sometimes you can pull that off, a surprise heel turn from a return, like a, a comeback, but, like, no, bro. Like, it, it didn't work. And the fact that she squashed Bianca was just, it was like, what the fuck? That that was kind of messed Received up. criticism from fans, but also Triple H, as Lynch would reveal that the game questioned why one of WWE's most universally beloved stars was now a villain. Thank simply you. defied all rationale. It makes no Luminite sense. Piper Niven becomes Dewdrop. I'm glad they, uh... Vince McMahon's final few years running W... I'm, I'm definitely glad they, uh, changed her back to face. She She's better as a face. WWE, he seemingly became obsessed with changing everyone's name. Uh -huh. Whether this was shortening names or completely erasing the old characters' names, McMahon seemed to believe that a name change was the key to a character getting over on the main roster. But one of the more infamous of these name changes was when Vince McMahon renamed Piper Niven. Niven would now turn into Dewdrop, Piper which Niven was simply sounds way an better. awful name. Yeah. It was really hard to recover from. The name change would also be explained in a segment on Raw, where Dewdrop would debut as Eva Marie's protege. Dewdrop would be about to introduce herself as Piper Niven before Marie cut her off and revealed her name to be Dewdrop. In her debut match, the Raw announced team had to pretend that they had no idea who she was, and McMahon decided to completely erase her prior work in NXT UK. This was a huge disappointment, as it would have made logical sense to simply introduce Piper Niven in the role and bring up her NXT UK success. Yeah. To make things worse, when Dewdrop eventually left the side of Marie, Dewdrop decided to keep the infamous name, which was a character decision that was completely baffling. Uh, yeah. Number eight, Don't like the she name. Never turns have. into a bad man. And one of the most nonsensical storylines of the Attitude Era was who ran over Stone Cold Steve yeah. Austin angle that started at Survivor me. Series 99. I did it. I did when this angle the first went down, WWE creative had no idea who was going to be revealed as the one behind the attack. But when Austin returned in 2000, WWE had to think of someone relatively quickly. They eventually came up with the idea of having Rikishi be the one driving the car who ran down Austin and Triple H would be the mastermind behind the entire thing. Rikishi would explain that he did it for The for Rock, the Rock yeah. in order to help The Rock reach superstardom in WWE. 
This reveal was poorly executed and fans still continue to criticize WWE's decision to name Rikishi as yeah. the one who ran over the Texas Rattlesnake. Following the big reveal, Rikishi would completely alter his persona and he would turn into a menacing heel. This character change flopped and fans hated it. It didn't take too long for WWE to completely scrap the heel character and before fans knew it, Rikishi was back to his lovable, colorful, dancing, babyface persona. <laughs> Number 7. Brie Bella's Subjective Memory uh, so I did it. I did it for The Rock. I was like, what? I... It, it... <laughs> when you look back on it, I was like, really? It could have come with anyone else to be the driver? Hell, you could have had Triple H as the fucking driver. Just had a mask on him. That would have worked. The storyline between the Bella twins in 2014 was universally panned by fans. It centered on Nikki Bella turning oh, on her yeah. sister Brie, and this would escalate when Nikki won a match against Brie, forcing her to become a personal assistant for 30 days. Nikki put Brie through hell during the feud, and the storyline officially lost fans at the Survivor Series pay-per-view. Brie would help Nikki win the Divas title from AJ oh, Lee at the event, and following the pay-per-view, the Bella Twins would be back together again, with the two showing no animosity whatsoever. Brie had seemingly forgotten that her own sister had put her through severe torment, and yeah. she had previously sworn revenge on her. It was WWE character development at its very worst and completely yep. killed any ounce of credibility Brie had left as a compelling character on the show. <laughs> Number six, Triple H and Ric Flair are best. Imagine, imagine. They say, yo, you're going to fight your, your sibling, it, which happens. You know, you're going to be in a feud with your sibling. And then they treat you like trash and then you're just supposed to forget and forgive. You don't even get your revenge or nothing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's some uh, Vince McMahon booking right there. Best friends again? Now, the 2005 feud between Triple H and Ric Flair is a vastly underrated feud that delivered a fantastic storyline between two icons of the WWE. Mm -hmm. The rivalry was a pure blood feud, and when oh. the feud came to a close, there was simply no way WWE would ever go back to the former Evolution stablemates being friends. However, when Triple H turned babyface in 2006 and reformed DX alongside Shawn Michaels, it was presented as if the game and Flair were once again best friends. Triple H would come to the aid of Flair during his battles with Edge and Randy Orton, and it was never remotely mentioned that less than a this year is prior, true. these two men were literally trying to end each other's careers. You know what? That's funny. I never really paid attention to that. Now that he brought that up, that makes a lot of sense. It, well, it didn't make a lot of sense. Wait, wait a minute. This so motherfucker did just try to kill you multiple times. And now y'all cool because you're a baby face. Huh. I've, I actually forgot all about that. <laughs> Whilst this wasn't a full-blown character change from both men, it certainly damaged the established lore of the respective characters. I forgot all Number about five, that. Randy Orton suddenly loves the fans. <laughs> Randy Orton's baby face 10 in 2004 was poorly planned and ultimately mm -hmm. poorly executed. Didn't Upon work. Upon winning the world title at the SummerSlam event, Orton was unceremoniously kicked out of the Evolution stable. Orton had been one of the most calculated, villainous heels on the roster, and yeah. now he was suddenly a baby face. He would begin to cut babyface fan-friendly promos where he mocked Evolution and tried to suck up to the fans. It made no sense that just because Orton was kicked out of the faction that he suddenly had good guy tendencies and wanted the support of fans. This was one of the main reasons that Orton's babyface push in 2004 completely failed and WWE would make the executive decision to turn him back into a heel just a few short months later. No well, you know, he, him working, he just works better as a heel. At that point, he still worked better as a heel. He didn't have, like, that baby face, like, persona down. Like, he still came off as a, as a prick. Number four, Edge forms the Judgment Day. When oh, Edge came out of right retirement here. in 2020, Edge instantly became one of the most popular stars on the roster. However, two years after his return, WWE made the bizarre decision to turn one of their biggest baby face stars into a heel. On the road to WrestleMania 38, Edge would issue an open challenge for WrestleMania, and when this was accepted by AJ Styles, Edge would viciously attack the former champion. Which was wild. Edge would debut Loved a new it, persona, though. which had gothic and supernatural undertones, and he would ridicule the fans, despite them showing him nothing but support upon his 2020 return. Edge's character would undergo further evolution when he started the Judgment Day stable, and this would consist of Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest. The stable promised to banish any wrestler who didn't fit in their mountain of omnipotence. 
Unfortunately, the character change for Edge didn't work as fans had no desire to boo Edge at this stage of his career. Mm -hmm. and WWE would make the sensible decision to turn Edge back into a babyface in the summer of 2022. Well, here's the thing about that that I, I don't I'm sure he knows, but he's missing. There's a lot of context that he's missing out of that one. They kicked him out the fucking group. <laughs> the thing is, I, I think Edge was all behind the Judgment Day because he was mainly just trying to get what the Judgment Day is now is what Edge wanted it to be before Vince kind of was trying to mess around with it and creative. That's what it is now is what it should have been. And I think Edge was trying to do that. I think Edge wanted to be a heel because, you know, I mean, he works better as a heel anyway, and he was trying to get them over. I think Edge wanted to be a heel. They didn't turn him babyface because because all of a sudden they just wanted to turn him babyface. They turned him babyface because he didn't want to be a part of the Judgment Day no more. So he had to turn babyface. So there's more context. It's not just they just decided to turn him babyface. No, he had to because he wasn't in the group no more. They kicked him out. Three, Finn Balor becomes the leader of the Judgment Day. Speaking of the Judgment Day, following the Hell in a Cell event in June 2022, Since we're talking WWE about would go in a different direction with the stable. The stable would come out for a promo on Raw and introduce their newest member, Finn Balor. Balor, Rhea Ripley, and Damian Priest would then kick Edge out of the group, making Balor the new leader. There was a major issue with this development as the stable had been making Balor's life hell and Balor and Priest had been in a violent feud. Why Balor was willing to put bad blood behind him in order to join a stable of people he disliked was yeah, never actually explained. Yeah, when you think about it. <laughs> Being nonsensical, Balor as the leader arguably worked better though, as Balor, Ripley, Priest, and later Dominic Mysterio certainly had more chemistry as a collective unit. Yeah, they're Number doing two, pretty good. The Demon Goes Corporate. A WWE Hall of Famer Kane has undergone some unique character changes throughout his tenure as a devil's favorite demon. For sure. However, in 2013, the Kane character completely took a nosedive as Kane became... Corporate oh, Kane. Yeah. Kane when Corporate Kane was the worst version of Kane. I couldn't stand it. Oh, it was so cringe. Yeah, I hated this version of Kane, bro. Hand his mask to Stephanie McMahon on an episode of Raw and in the process joined the authority. He would appear in a suit and tie and wrestle in suit pants and slacks. <laughs> it was truly awful, and it was no surprise that most fans label this as the worst incarnation of Kane's Bro, game. it's funny when he says it. He's wrestling in suit pants and slacks. I don't know why that's funny the way WrestleMania said it, bro. He wrestled in poot. I mean, wrestled in suit pants and slacks. The devil favorite demon is out here wrestling in corporate clothes, bro. The devil's favorite uh, tax man. Like, what the fuck, bro? It was never explained why it was happening or why Kane suddenly wasn't demonic was basically a normal human being. Kane would eventually revert to his prior persona with the iconic mask down the line, but unfortunately, the mystique was heavily damaged with the corporate stooge character. And number one, Stone Cold sells his soul to the devil himself. Yeah, this I, I can understand this being on air because when you think about it in paper, in theory, it just, it sounds good, but ultimately, they didn't need to change what wasn't broken, you know? Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon's feud defined the Attitude Era. That's why it was so unbelievably shocking when the two joined forces at WrestleMania 17. Yep. McMahon would assist Austin in defeating The Rock to win the WWE title. It was presented on screen that Austin had sold his soul in order to win the WWE's top prize. Austin subsequently turned heel and some fans cite this as the end of the Attitude Era and a downward trajectory of the creative output from Look WWE. This, <laughs> the common complaint surrounding this character change from Austin was that it was unnecessary and failed to make logical sense. Yeah. McMahon was Austin's mortal enemy and would never under any circumstances join forces with him. Additionally, the kayfabe reasoning of Austin needing help to defeat a man he's defeated numerous times yeah. failed to justify the character shift. Austin would discuss the heel turn on his podcast and he revealed that he regrets the character change and wishes it never transpired. But they have it Yeah, folks. he Ten never WWE needed to go heel, bro. I mean, he's one of those people, he, you didn't have to turn him heel. Like, especially, or if you wanted to turn him heel, it could have been another way. Granted, it was going to be hard to get him to get booed because people loved him. So it was like, eh, I don't know. But that was that was always a, 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 a definitely a head scratcher, especially growing up. Like, why? Why would he do that? That don't make sense for Stone Cold. 
JR still sold it like a, a champion, though, because he was just as surprised as I was. He sold the hell out of that, but I was just so confused by that. But comment down below. Let me know what are some character changes in WWE had, that you felt like it just made absolute no sense why this person would all of a sudden change the way they are out of nowhere let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel this is your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all giving me see y'all next one peace